Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Shikari Jackson. It is January 6, 2016, and here's a look at our top story. Tonight, the RNC is now seriously considering impeachment proceedings against Barack Obama. The resolution drafted by the North American Law Center consists of 48 criminal charges. Meanwhile, Obama continues his plans for the largest gun grab in American history. We can set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint. Why can't we do the same thing for our guns? Plus, a popular YouTube channel gets shut down by Google because of a pro-gun video. All that plus much more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. You don't have that much time to take away Americans' guns, declare martial law, and put hardworking Americans in FEMA camps. <laughs> if you're going to do that, you better, better get, get started. You better get started. <laughs> Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell, it removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Recently, we've seen the president come out and say some very strong things about gun rights here in America, or a lack thereof. His desire, strong will to have gun rights, or I guess gun sense, I guess is what he's calling it, be a strong point of his administration before he leaves. And while it may sound reasonable to say that he wants things like uh, smart guns and universal background checks, he always comes back and says it's for the children, right? It's always for the children. If we can stop one child from dying, this will all be worth it. But the thing that people often forget, or maybe you just don't even know, the president who's telling you all this one child stuff has the administration that gave guns to drug cartels in Mexico. The president who keeps saying one child has sent drones to blow up wedding parties in places like Yemen and Pakistan, has jets go overseas and blow up hospitals, who has uh, CIA funding groups like Al-Qaeda, airdropping grenades to groups like ISIS. And he keeps saying one child. Those are thousands of children who have died, including American citizens. Now, this one person isn't a child, but Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, killed by guns given to Mexican drug cartels during Operation Fast and Furious. When you watch his speech, when he listed out all those victims, you notice that he conveniently left out the name of Brian Terry because he doesn't want to bring attention to the actions that he's doing. And it's very troubling to me that he would want to disarm people. Meanwhile, he's standing in a room full of Secret Service, uh, you know, has snipers on the roofs when he goes places. And I'm not speculating. I've been to the White House. I've seen Obama here in Austin. I've seen him in Oregon. The guy has plenty of security, as you would expect a president would. Meanwhile, he's telling you that he wants you to have uh, many more parameters between you and the legal lawful purchase of your firearm while he states that he is a constitutional lawyer and he knows a thing or two about the Second Amendment. Well, he, he should know that he is violating your Second Amendment by trying to uh, push things such as uh, universal background checks and also smart guns. Now, if you're a person and you say, hey, I want a smart gun in my house, I don't want to take the risk that my child or somebody will break into my home and steal my firearm, that's your business. In the United States of America, that's perfectly fine if you choose to do that. I'm saying if you try to mandate this for people across the board, that's where the problem lies. And now we see that uh, people in the RNC are saying that they have a resolution that's being pushed by a West Michigan uh, political blog. And they say it's simply they want you to reach out to your House of Representatives and tell them, hey, we want to impeach Obama. Now, whether or not you think impeachment is a good idea or not, I think basically if we could just get people to understand all the things I just mentioned to you about this president, 
who wants to uh, restrict or impede your right to bear arms, then I think everybody could get more on the same page. Because yes, he'll come out here and uh, whether he cried or not, you know, a lot of people speculate. It's really not my issue. My issue is that he keeps coming out here and telling you about all these people who died because of, of firearms in this country. Meanwhile, if you look at the statistics that we'll get into later, more people die by suicides when it comes to firearms. You know, you got people who slip and fall in showers. You have people who die many, many different ways, but they keep coming after your firearms. And now we see Obama is teaming up with the UN once again, as he has done in the past. He says that he doesn't get his authority from Congress. He gets his authority from the United Nations. And they have the, uh, the Strong Cities Network. And basically, they're going to get together with a bunch of different cities, and they're going to push a UN agenda to fight extremism. Now, on the surface, it may sound reasonable to uh, get together and fight extremism. But once again, realize the United Nations has as their logo a giant gun that's tied into a knot. And it's not just because they want to ban guns, restrict your right to bear arms. It's just of all things. You know, they're going to ban your right to bear arms. So what's going to be next? If you have no means to defend yourself, what other rights will they quickly come in and swoop away from you? And I know we have issues with the police. Uh, here, abroad, you know, pretty much any place you can have uh, various issues with the police. But the answer is not to federalize the police. The answer is not to strong uh, go into the strong cities network and have your police officers, your peace officers become a part of this United Nations agenda. It's just completely ridiculous and not something that we should fall for here in the United States of America. And now we have another article from uh, John Whitehead. Things are getting scary. Global police pre-crime in the war on domestic extremists. Now, once again, the uh, strong cities say that they're going to target extremists. Well, let's take a minute and think about what an extremist is in their eyes. They view extremists, uh, law enforcement in many cases, you know, plenty of good law enforcement out there as well. Let me put that out there. But some of these groups, they say if you protest abortion, that's a act of domestic extremism. If you are concerned about uh, the NSA listening to your phone calls, you're an extremist. If you should have nothing to hide, so you shouldn't mind if the NSA is listening in on your phone calls, it was a very funny skit. I can't remember. It's on one of those late night talk shows. And they were uh, talking about Edward Snowden went about it the wrong way. He's trying to get people concerned about their rights and all these other things. If they, if he came out and said that, hey, people are looking at your, you know, sexy pictures on kick or looking at your sexting or all these other things. People are like, oh, oh, the NSA can see that. Like, yeah, they can see that. And they list you as a terrorist. Let's look at this article from Paul Joseph Watson back in 2010. Now, in this article, Watson documents all the things that could identify you as a domestic terrorist under the MIAC report. If you scroll down there, you can see a list of all the, of all the actions there. And starting with the list is uh, supporting Congressman Ron Paul. If you support Congressman Ron Paul, they would list that as an uh, act of suspicion under the MIAC report. And I'm just going to skip around here. There's so many, I can't talk about them all. But also, owning gold, displaying historical U.S. flags. Opposing abortion, which I mentioned earlier, being interested in animal rights. Now, this should uh, concern many people. A lot of people like to go on YouTube. They watch funny dog and cat videos. If you're concerned about the well-being of your pet, you could be a domestic extremist. Also, defending the U.S. Constitution, my favorite, being bald. I'm not making this up. If you go to the Mayak Report, they say if you are bald, you are a potential domestic terrorist. Let's continue. Being a nice guy. You know, some of those guys... He's a nice guy. You know, he comes out, you know, he maybe buys, buys ice cream for the kids when the ice cream truck drives by. You're a uh, potential domestic terrorist. Also wearing Levi blue jeans and looking like a normal person. I mean, this stuff is so broad that everybody falls under this umbrella in some way or another. Also renting cars. I mean, everybody in the United States qualifies for this stuff in some way, shape or form. But you're a potential domestic terrorist. And this is why you can't fall for all these uh, databases no fly, no gun buy list, because it's just so broad. You have kids being kicked off planes because they have the same name as a potential suspect. You can't push it all the way through and have people go through with these things. And this is a case in point why you need to have a uh, quick access to your firearms. And this happened in Springfield. Uh, she said, gun rights saved my life. And this is a mother. She was out with her children and a man wielding a knife approached them. But luckily her husband had his pistol and scared the guy off. And, you know, once again, as I always say, this is no disrespect to police officers, but police officers cannot be there to protect you all the time. That's why you need to have the means to protect yourself. And once again, as we talk about these smart guns, let's say you get a smart, a smart pistol, right? You can't own a pistol unless you're 21. So 
a child would not be able to use the pistol without a uh, parent present. With that said, I did a story a few years ago called uh, Smart Guns Endanger Children. And this story was all about uh, children in various states at various ages, all under age 18, who are not legally, lawfully able to own a firearm, but were home alone when an intruder broke in and they shot the intruder. There's a 12-year-old girl in Oklahoma, home alone. She goes and hides in the bathroom. The perpetrator wiggles the handle. She shoots the guy one time. He runs out the house. A 15-year-old boy in Houston was home with his little sister. Uh, some guys tried to break into the back door. I guess he had been, been uh, hunting with his father, knew how to use the AR-15, shot two bad guys, and you know they lived to tell the tale, the, the young boy and his sister. But they don't want to talk about anything like that. They just want to say that if you own a firearm, if you don't have it registered, if you don't do all these other things, you're a potential terrorist. Everybody needs to know who has a firearm in the United States of America. And when they do find out if you own a firearm, then they want to list you like a sex offender in places like New York, where they put in the publications your address and, and where you live. And meanwhile, I think it was Project Veritas. They went door to door to these publications who were listing people like sex offenders and say, hey, I got this nice gun-free zone sign. You want to stick it in your front yard? And they say, no. Why don't you want to put it in your front yard? Well, somebody might break in. You think somebody might break in your house if they know you don't have a firearm? It goes both ways. It's not just about uh, making you register. It also shows the people who don't have firearms. That's the other end to that spectrum. Now, we talked about things that could have you listed as a potential domestic terrorist. Let's talk about the things that have you listed as mentally defective. And we see Americans skeptical of global warming can lose their gun rights due to an executive order. And this is a uh, follow-up by Kit Daniels. He's been posting these quite frequently lately, talking about how uh, psychologists are saying, if you're skeptical of man-made climate change, you are potentially mentally ill. And it's a bunch of bull. And once again, I'm not debating that the climate changes. The climate has changed all throughout history. My deal is paying uh, carbon taxes to private individuals and organizations like Al Gore is not going to help anything. It's like saying that if you're in the Old Testament, if you paid the Pharisees a bunch of money, the, the fire wouldn't have rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah. It's completely ridiculous. These guys are just doing another kind of witch doctor scheme to get your money and uh, just screw you another way. Now, here's another guy who would be listed as mentally defective, a father who's concerned about his 10-year-old daughter being patted down by the TSA. A 10-year-old girl, now this is a perfect example. If you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't worry about it. Because they say, this guy, uh, you go to the TSA, you should just let these people touch all over you, including your children, because she had a, a little three-ounce Capri Sun or uh, some type of uh, juice beverage in her carry-on luggage, so they have to pat her down. Now, if you defy things like this, they would list you as having oppositional defiant disorder. This young man or this uh, father and his daughter would be listed as mentally defective under these type of ridiculous laws. Now, as I mentioned earlier, they're saying that if you, uh, if you buy a firearm, you're more likely to kill yourself. People kill themselves every day. People commit suicide, they shoot themselves, they jump in front of trains and all types of things. And now we see the article from the New York Times, gun deaths are mostly suicides. Yeah, so we're supposed to ban something because somebody might kill themselves with it. People kill themselves with pills. You know, in uh, Foxconn factories in China where they make iPods and iPads, they, uh, they have suicide nets because people jump off the buildings. People die on accident every single day. Case in point, man falls to his death from a cliff after trying to take a selfie. You know what I mean? People die on purpose. They die on accident. Are you going to ban people from taking selfies? Of course not. That is ridiculous. Now, before we go into more special reports, we have this uh, report from Leanne McAdoo about Hillary Clinton. Then stay tuned because later in our show, we'll have a special report from the rest of the crew detailing all manner of topics. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. In an otherwise softball interview with Chris Matthews, Hillary Clinton seemed a little bit rattled when she was asked to explain the difference between a Democrat and a socialist. What's the difference between a socialist and a Democrat? Well, is you that a question you want to answer, or would you rather not? Well, uh, you know, I, you'd have to ask. Well, see, I'm you'd asking have, you. You're well, a Democrat. He's a socialist. Do you, would you like somebody to call you a socialist? I wouldn't like somebody calling well, me a socialist. But I'm, I'm not one. Okay. I well, mean, what's I'm, the difference I'm between a socialist one. and a Democrat? Last well, question. I can tell you what I am. I am a progressive uh -huh. Democrat. I'm a progressive How's Democrat that different than a socialist? who likes to get things done and who believes that okay. we are better off in this mm -hmm. country when we're trying to solve problems together. So this is the party's leading candidate.